Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar on loneliness. By viewing this webinar, um, you're taking a step towards improving your wellness because social connection to others is one of those needs, one of the most basic needs uh, that we have. Um, so social connection not only helps us feel better, but it also helps us thrive. Um, so this is a really important topic. Let me introduce myself. My name is Jen Beaupre, and I'm one of the counselors at the Counseling and Student Wellbeing Department at George Brown College. And presenting with me is... Uh, and my name is Jeremy Jacob, and I'm another counselor who works in the Counseling and Student Wellbeing Department at George Brown. So thanks for joining us today, folks. Okay, so uh, thank you, Jeremy. So our goal for today for the for the webinar will be to we're going to talk about what loneliness is, how it may impact us, and also some ways that to address it. Uh, if you're having some you're experiencing some feelings of loneliness, we'll, we'll be providing some suggestions, some ideas on how to address it. Our hope um, is that by the end of the webinar, uh, you're going to be feeling inspired to take some steps towards addressing any feelings that you might be having of loneliness. And also that you'll know, you'll have some ideas of where to turn if you need help. So first, let's talk about why uh, we feel this topic is so important to talk about. Um, so webinar, the webinar on loneliness, it's, it's important because it's, it's unfortunately um, become a, a public health concern. Um, there's been a lot of attention on the topic in the last few years. And it's, it's, you know, with all the studies they've done, they've realized it's reached epidemic levels um, and something that's important to address. In fact, in the, uh, in the UK, it was such uh, an issue that they've decided to appoint a Minister of Loneliness, whose job it is to look at some programmings to help, um, to help sort of the community and to help people feel less disconnected and lonely. Uh, in terms of Canada, um, surveys have indicated that one in five Canadians report feeling lonely. And um, with respect to students, and specifically George Brown students, uh, there was a survey that was done last year in 2019. Um, and it's, it's a wide sort of a, a big survey uh, assessing the health, the physical and mental health of students. And GBC students reported, or 68% of them reported um, that they were feeling very lonely at any time within the last 12 months. Now, that's not every single day, uh, but certainly at least one or a few times over the last 12 months, they felt very lonely. And 68% is, is quite a large number. Um, loneliness uh, not only has major impacts on our mental health, but also they found that it has some major impacts as well on our physical health. So I'll be talking about that a little bit more later on. And so as a community, we really should be concerned about this. We should take care of ourselves in ensuring that uh, we recognize that we may be feeling lonely and that we take some action to improve uh, our wellness. So what do we mean by loneliness? Um, according to Britannica.com, uh, loneliness is a distressing experience that occurs when a person's social relationships are perceived by that person to be less in quantity and especially in quality uh, than desired. Uh, so the experience of loneliness is highly subjective. An individual can be alone without feeling lonely or can feel lonely even when with other people. So the key points to remember here is that uh, loneliness doesn't mean being alone, uh, but it, it's really about feeling alone. So someone can be surrounded with people, um, have a lot of people in their lives and still feel lonely. So really it's the disconnect between the, the current relationships that someone might have and the relationships that they would like to have, the type of relationship, the quality of relationship they'd like to have. So let's look at our agenda, what uh, we would like to cover for today. Um, the, what's the impact? So we're going to talk a bit about the impact of loneliness on our health and wellness. Um, Jeremy's going to talk to us about loneliness from a neuroscience perspective, um, just sort of a, a different angle on it. 
And then we're going to get into some strategies for reducing feelings of loneliness by increasing and improving uh, social connections in our lives. And then uh, we're going to share some resources at the end uh, for emotional support if you're experiencing feelings of loneliness, because it can be quite painful. And also for in connecting online with other folks who may be experiencing similar situations or may be able to offer support. Okay, so let's talk about now let's talk about the impact of uh, loneliness on our health and wellness. And really what I'm talking about this part here, it's really more about chronic loneliness. Uh, we all from time to time, it's normal to experience some feelings, feelings of loneliness. Uh, but when the loneliness is chronic, that's when the impact is really can re really be negative. And studies have it's, it's well established and studies uh, and meta analyses that chronic loneliness has negative impacts on our physical and mental health. Um, some, in fact, some of the health risks in terms of our physical uh, health are similar to that of obesity and also smoking 15 cigarettes per day. Um, so quite significant in terms of our physical health. Um, according to research, uh, when people are connected, feel connected to others, and again, remember it's not necessarily a lot of people, it's as long as they feel they have some connection to a good quality connection with certain people, um, they tend to, um, they, they are less likely to develop mental health uh, concerns such as depression and anxiety, and they tend to be more resilient. Jeremy's gonna talk a little bit more about anxiety and uh, loneliness and how, what, how it impacts our uh, stress response when he talks about neuroscience. Um, also in terms of our physical health, other things they've noticed, people are more connected to others, um, have, are less likely to experience cardiovascular disease, inflammation, and they tend to have a stronger immune system as well. So very interesting how being connected to others can actually impact our immune system and make us li more likely to be healthy. When in, in terms of uh, cognitive um, problems and dementia, uh, there is a study that demonstrated that um, the lack of connection with others and chronic loneliness can actually increase our chances of dementia by 40%. Uh, so quite significant again. And last but not least, uh, they've shown in studies as well that those people connected to others tend to live longer as well. So I'm gonna pass it over to Jeremy now, and he's gonna to talk to us about neuroscience and loneliness. Yes, I would love to do that. So thank you uh, very much for that information, Jen. Uh, so we're gonna talk a bit about neuroscience and loneliness and what science has sort of discovered is going on with our brains and various chemicals within our brains when we do experience uh, loneliness, both in the short term and a little bit more chronically. There has been uh, quite a bit of research that's been conducted on what happens in our brains when we are experiencing loneliness. Uh, science has determined that prolonged social isolation tends to affect uh, two primary uh, neurotransmitters or chemicals that are in our brain. So that being serotonin and dopamine. And you may have heard of both of these uh, neurotransmitters before. Um, they are known to have an impact uh, serotonin and dopamine rather is known to have an impact on our emotional well-being and our sense of emotional health. And the activation of serotonin and dopamine seems to provide motivation for folks to seek out social connections with others. So feelings of loneliness serves a biological function by pushing us to make connections with other people. And it may be helpful to view loneliness in this way, rather than just to see it as a negative emotion that serves no useful purpose other than to make us feel bad. Uh, an analogy that might be helpful uh, to understand this concept is that, you know, when we're thirsty, we use this feeling uh, to motivate us to drink. Often we'll drink water. So in this way, feeling lonely is no different. This emotion can be uncomfortable, just like thirst, which then motivates us to erase or diminish it through finding social connections with other people. 
um, it should be noted that feeling lonely is a normal emotional state. So just like anger or sadness or anxiety, most everyone has felt lonely at some point in their lives. Um, it's good to keep in mind that if loneliness is left untreated, just like anxiety, just like depression, it can lead to other emotional disturbances uh, and even some serious mental health conditions as well. So we can go to the next slide, please. So loneliness pitfalls, what, what does the research tell us about the pitfalls that can happen with, with uh, being in the state of loneliness? Well, the University of Chicago conducted some research on what happens in the brains of people who are experiencing feelings of loneliness. And this is what they discovered. Feeling lonely often can trigger a heightened awareness uh, for social threats in the environment. This leads to an increased surveillance or being aware of the social world in an unconscious focus on trying to protect the self. The result is a bit of a vicious cycle where a person might tend to withdraw. So the lonely person becomes increasingly suspicious of the world around them. They're feeling lonely. They feel like nobody wants to connect with them. And this intensifies uh, their sense of isolation. Researchers have found that lonely people's brains tend to perceive or are more aware of social threats uh, in an automatic way, and they arrive at these, um, this level of awareness more quickly than the non-lonely person. So what this essentially means is that when the brain is primed by feelings of loneliness, there's a greater likelihood that the person will take measures, either conscious or unconscious, in order to protect themselves, which often results in further withdrawal and isolation. It's a very common reaction. So we know that that's the negative aspect of it. So what is the solution or what is something that people can do? Um, and out of this research is an understanding or a belief that to feel less lonely, it can be important to start focusing on the needs and feelings of others. That takes the person out of their immediate sort of like sense of feeling lonely and, and sort of puts the attention onto another person, essentially distracting the less attention on your lonely thoughts and feelings, the better. So we would encourage folks to make some effort to reach out to others, uh, to initiate conversations, especially when you don't feel like it. And there is value in face-to-face -face interaction and there is value in using online platforms to connect with people as well. The, the important thing to keep in mind is making connections with other people uh, whether you're just having an idle conversation or you're engaged in some kind of helping activity will help to foster connections and, and will help to reduce or diminish the sense of loneliness that a person feels. Um, next slide, please, Jen. So there has been um, a really, really big study done on loneliness uh, recently uh, it was published in the Journal of Personality and Individual Differences. So the sample size was 46,000 people, and this was done across 237 different countries, and it represents uh, the most extensive and varied study on loneliness to date. And the study uncovered three interesting findings. First of all, there appears to be an impact of um, a person's age on loneliness. Younger people tend to experience loneliness more than older age groups. Um, the older you are, the less likely you will be to experience loneliness. Another thing that the study teased out was that there was an impact on gender and loneliness as well. Uh, men reported more feelings of loneliness than women did, and this was true across all age groups. So in this sense, it seems that men are in a bit of a higher risk category with respect to feeling lonely. Um, the third thing that they discovered was that society, uh, the kind of society that one lives in also has an impact on loneliness. People living in individualistic societies reported more uh, loneliness than those living in collectivist societies. So just to break that down a little bit, an individualistic society such as the United States and Canada uh, are societies where there's more of an emphasis on individual success. 
collectivist societies, um, the ones that we tend to see in countries such as Guatemala or Spain, the needs and the goals of the larger group, such as families or communities, are seen to be more important uh, than individual needs or individual successes. Um, and because this was the largest study that was done to date, my guess is that it's going to um, probably motivate or inspire future large scale studies so we can start to have an understanding of like why do the age differences exist, uh, why is there a gender difference, um, as well as a societal difference. We don't have those answers yet, but our hope is that the answers are coming. Next slide, please, Jen. All right, so, so we talked a lot about what loneliness is, how we define it, um, the health impacts on loneliness, and we explored a little bit about the, the neuroscience or the neurobiology behind it. So what about, what can we do about it? I mean, it's important to have some strategies to help uh, foster a sense of social connection. So this is what we're hoping to, uh, to explore right now. A um, couple of things they're gonna say just before we go into the slides. Prior to COVID-19, um, I think most of us can agree that there were way more opportunities for social connection to happen because we just had more options that just are not currently available to us. The times that we're living in right now, it's really important that we make an extra effort to connect to others in order to maintain those connections for all of us and to protect our sense of health and wellness. Waiting for physical distancing to end is not a healthy option because we don't know when it's going to end. Um, and our health and wellness matters right now. So I'm not going to go through this line by line, but there's a couple of things I want to highlight. Staying connected with, with friends and family is very, very important. The, you know, the folks that are in your closest circle, your friends, your family, uh, are the folks that are gonna be able to provide uh, likely the, the, the highest quality or, or the, the highest value of support to you. So if you're fortunate enough to have some physical connection with friends and family, that's great. Um, a lot of us probably will need to connect with friends and family using online platforms. Um, and it's wonderful that the technology exists that allows us to do that. However, I do want to mention that um, too much time in front of a screen um, is exhausting. We've heard uh, recently about Zoom fatigue. So if you find that you're using online video platforms in order to connect with family and friends, um, pay attention to the impact uh, that the video screens are having on you and take breaks when and where appropriate. You'll need to find that balance um, to completely shrink away and not use the technology to connect could be problematic because it would reduce opportunities for you to connect with other people, but doing too much of it too um, can grind you down and be overwhelming. So just be cautious around it and use your best judgment, check in with yourself around how you're feeling with respect to screen usage. Um, it's also important to connect with other students at George Brown. So even though we've largely moved to an online platform, you are still a student, you're still enrolled in a program, you're still part of the George Brown College community and the various um, support um, divisions uh, and departments that existed when we were all going into school physically still exist, albeit um, in an online platform. So I'm talking about stuff like the the Student Association, uh, the Black Student Success Network, the International Center, Peer Connect, all of these supports still exist and you can find them ultimately by going to the main uh, George Brown College website and just typing these, um, these programs or services into the search bar in order to get connected to their specific web page. So don't deny yourself the opportunity to maintain connections uh, with the George Brown College community. Um, another thing that can be helpful is offering to help somebody. So I think that this was mentioned in a, in a couple of slides previous, just around the neuroscience piece. When we help other people, first of all, it provides a wonderful distraction to our feeling of loneliness. It feels good to help another person. And in the process of helping another person, we are actually fostering 
and participating in an interpersonal connection. So whether that be a neighbor, a friend, a family member, either um, in, in face to face or online, the act of helping um, helps more than just the person that you're helping that actually helps yourself. So pay attention to and seek out opportunities to be able to do that. Um, virtual volunteering is another good way to help other people. Um, and we have a resource for this a little bit later on. At the end of this presentation, we're going to provide you with some online resources that you, will allow you to connect directly with some of the strategies that we're talking about right now. Okay. Uh, next, and I think the next slide, if I'm not mistaken, will be Jen talking a little bit about some strategies for improving social connection. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Um, so Jeremy talked a lot about some options for increasing your connection and um, although they're, they are more limited right now, there are still uh, quite a few options. However, though, however you choose to connect with others, and that is entirely uh, up to you, but however you choose to connect, there's some key things to remember in terms of improving those connections and reducing those feelings of loneliness. One of them is um, being strategic. So think about the types of relationships that you want. And that's very important in terms of how you're going to spend your energy, your time, um, and to get sort of the more, more bang for your buck. Um, so think about, do you, are, are you more interested in one-on-one -on -one connection with people or small group, larger groups? That will determine the type of, of activities or ways of connecting that you're going to engage in. Think about if you're thinking, are, are you looking to have fun or are you looking to engage or have more intellectual stimulation? What are your interests? You know, do you need emotional support? So those are all questions that you may want to ask yourself when you're trying to figure out how you'd like to connect with others. Um, take it slow and be patient. So in terms of that, you know, one of the things to think about is if you've been feeling very isolated for some time, it may be good to give yourself some small goals and take it one step at a time. And, and remember too, that it does take some time to feel connected and to feel like you're, you're part of a group. So be patient and, and keep on trying. It may take a little while and you may not feel any less lonely initially, uh, but eventually those feelings may subside. Keep in mind that um, it's, you won't be everyone's friend, of course, and that's, that's okay. Not everyone will be your friend either, right? It's really not a reflection on your value or your, your worth as, as a person. It really just means that you haven't met the right group of people or the right individuals yet, and you just don't mesh yet. And that's, that's okay. You just keep on trying and eventually um, you, you will be able to find that. Uh, aim for healthy relationships. Um, so some of the things to think about or to ask yourself is, am I feeling hurt when I talk to this individual or this group of ind individuals? Um, are my needs respected? Um, does the other person feel the same way or th do they feel like they're hurt? And because if the relationship is just one-sided, it's gonna be very difficult to form that meaningful bond that will help address those feelings of loneliness. So this is key to remember. And if you're finding, you know, for a lot of us, sometimes it's hard to say no to people or it's hard to ask for what we need. Um, and if this is something you struggle with, then it may be something that you wanna work on or you wanna to talk to a counselor about. And because this may permeate various relationships in your life and it may be helpful to kind of work on that and see if there can be some improvements in that way. Um, Avoid comparing yourself to others. That's that's a common one and, and a hard one sometimes, right? So it gets, with social media, it really makes it easy to compare ourselves to others. Um, but what's important to remember is that, you know, although other people may look on social media like they're, you know, very happy and they have lots of, you know, connections with people, remember that it's it's a very subjective experience. It may be deceiving what you see online. That individual may have a lot of people around them, but they may still feel lonely. So it, something to keep in mind in terms of perspective when you're using social media. And for some people, 
it's so triggering that maybe the best thing to do is to consider reducing their use of social media, at least for a period of time, uh, if they notice that it's impacting them in a negative way. And on the topic of, of, topic of social media, um, although it's, it's a great way to connect uh, with others, it can be a great way. Um, it is also really good to have some of that time connecting with others to be face-to-face -face via video right now um, or some phone conversations, right? There's nothing like hearing someone's voice or seeing their face. There's a lot more information you can get from a person and a lot more connection that can happen with those pieces that can't happen when we're texting or when we're using social media. And last but not least, um, think about your mental health. You know, what's, you know, if, if poor mental health can really intensify feelings of loneliness, feelings of isolation, uh, may cause us to withdraw from others, may bring on some negative uh, thinking. So those are all things that can make it really difficult to connect with others or to find the motivation to connect with others. So take care of your mental health. Um, as Jeremy mentioned earlier, um, that there, there are some resources, there are ways to uh, gain support, and, and he's going to share some specific resources as well uh, for helping you taking care of your mental health. Check out some of our other websites um, that will be available on our website as well uh, with the topics of, of, of mental health and stress management, etc. Uh, those are all pieces. If you can take care of that, then the connection with others will be a lot easier. So I'll pa pass it on to pass it back to Jeremy. Um, so he's going to talk to us about some of the resources that we've been talking about. Great. Thanks, Janet. Thanks for those strategies. I think that um, they, they will prove to be quite helpful and good things for us to keep in mind, uh, to be sure. So the, the meta message, I think that we want to communicate to, to folks that are um, watching this presentation is that the antidote to loneliness is more social connection, uh, at least to the best of our ability to try to maintain uh, and develop new social connections. Uh, while physical distancing tends to limit the types of social connection we can have, there are still many ways that we can connect with others, certainly by leveraging technology uh, that will allow us to do so. So the next three slides uh, we're, we're going to pre present to you um, some, you know, uh, solid researched um, opportunities to make connections, uh, to seek out supports that can improve your health and wellness, uh, hopefully reduce your sense of loneliness. These lists are not exhaustive, um, but it is our hope that it gives you some idea of where to look for online supports, as well as online places to connect with others. Um, this is a video recording, so you, you won't be able to directly click on these links, um, but I would encourage you to uh, pull out your phone and take snaps of these slides so that you at least have the URL and you can sort of type that into your, uh, to your computer's web browser or whatever device you're using to connect to the internet uh, so that you can have a direct access to these links. And um, the time of the recording um, has been, or it is October of 2020, and we recently went through these links just to make sure that they still work and that there weren't any um, dud links. So all of these links, as of the time of the recording, are still active. Um, so hopefully they remain so uh, moving forward. Um, so the first slide talks about um, mental health supports. So the list that you see in front of you, these are um, formal mental health supports um, to provide um, mental health support to folks that are, are dealing with some, some level of struggle, uh, some level of challenge, even above and beyond feelings of loneliness, depression, anxiety, some kind of worry, interpersonal relationship issues. I mean, you name it, the whole spectrum uh, of possible challenges um, or difficulties that a person can have uh, may be able to be addressed through these supports. The top two I want to talk about specifically. So the George Brown Counts or George Brown College Counseling Department has their own website, and that is the link to it. 
Um, through that website, you can get direct access to registering um, as a student for um, counseling supports within the college. We recently revamped this website and there is additional information contained on the website to help support your overall sense of uh, health and wellness. There's also external resource links. Um, so I, we would encourage you to, even if you're not interested in getting connected to uh, individual counseling supports, please go on this website and take a look at some of the offerings that are there um, because it was designed um, with trying to provide information and options for students that might be struggling in various ways. Real Campus is also a comprehensive um, health support, both physical health and mental health support. So if you have not opted out of your uh, student insurance, um, then you have access to Real Campus. And like I said, it's more than just mental health support. Uh, there's the potential to get connected to other um, supports under the umbrella of health and wellness. Um, so please consider going to the Real Campus website. There's a very brief registration process uh, in order to get connected to Real Campus, but it will open up opportunities for formalized supports um, that hopefully are, are something that, that could sort of help you with whatever it is that you might be dealing with. Um, Okay, maybe the next slide, please. So this second resource slide uh, falls under the category of peer mental health support. So not everybody who, who might be struggling feels like they need formalized support. Uh, some folks find way more usefulness or utility in peer support and so um, this list, this shorter list, is about peer mental health supports that exist online. Um, and the nice thing about peer mental health supports is, you know, it's not formal. So um, for, for folks that might be craving connection, but not necessarily interested in talking directly to a counselor about it, uh, they'd rather, you know, speak to somebody who is, you know, closer in age um, or in their peer group. Uh, these links will get you connected to those informal uh, peer-based supports, which, again, it's a, it's a personal choice. Uh, even though I'm a counselor and I support the counseling profession, I also recognize that you know, whatever it is that a person is dealing with, if they have a greater sense of what would be important for them, then it's important that that person get connected to the resource that seems appropriate for uh, the needs that they are having. Um, so this is just a list of peer mental health supports that could hopefully be helpful. Um, and then we'll, maybe we'll go to the last slide, the last resource slide. So these are just other resources that don't necessarily fall uh, strictly on the formal mental health or, or peer support uh, slides. A couple of them that I want to mention is um, the volunteer online. So I specifically want to mention this one because I spoke briefly a few slides ago about how volunteering, uh, putting yourself in a helping position can be helpful to make you feel better, to foster connections, and to help somebody else out. In, in the sort of uh, COVID era that we are now living in and the difficulties uh, with the physical distancing piece, you know, being able to go into an agency or an organization, sign up as a volunteer and work directly with people may be a little bit more limited than it otherwise was. So there, this online volunteering.org organization is you know, they've, they've taken on their mission to uh, provide a platform to help people get connected to volunteer opportunities online. So it, it's helpful in the sense that it's still putting yourself in a, in a helping position. Um, you get the opportunity to help somebody else out. You get the opportunity to foster a connection, potentially feel a little bit less lonely. And then you're also doing it in a way that is much more safer. So if the, you know, if if working directly with somebody is something that makes you feel a little bit nervous or the idea of doing it with a mask on is just not palatable to you, uh, doing it on an online platform um, allows you to make that connection without necessarily compromising your own level of comfort or your sense of health. Um, 
So please check out that website um, in addition to the other ones that we have listed as well. And our, our deepest, uh, most sincere hope is that you find uh, some of these resources specifically helpful to, um, to your situation and the needs that you have. And I think that that's it for that slide. Hey, thank you, Jeremy. Um, so some concluding and thoughts, final thoughts uh, we wanted to mention is loneliness, as we mentioned, is a normal and appropriate emotion <clears throat> that many people are experiencing, especially right now with the COVID times that we're in. Um, there are many things that you can do to help uh, reduce those feelings of loneliness, and we're certainly hoping that um, the information that we provided and the resources that we gave you uh, will give you a sense of, of what, what ideas or what some things you can be doing to help with that. Um, online resources are available to support your efforts, to increasing social connection to others, and also to get some emotional support when it's, it's so hard right now for so many folks. And our hope is that the webinar um, gave you some inspiration, some ideas, some motivation uh, to take some steps to increasing your, your sense of social connection and reducing uh, any feelings of loneliness you may be experiencing. And we wanted to uh, also share with you, um, Jeremy did talk about the uh, George Brown College Counseling Service a little bit earlier, uh, but we wanted to give you contact, uh, specific contact information in case you do want to book an appointment. Um, what you do is you go to our website, um, as Jeremy mentioned earlier, if you want to take a screenshot or picture, uh, some way to capture this so you have it later. Um, the website is at the top for the registration form. Uh, if, you, if you don't, or if you want to go back to it later on, you can always go to the GBC website and type in counseling services on the, the, the search field and it will bring you to our, uh, our website and all the other resources that are there. Um, if you need assistance in booking an appointment or if you have questions and you want to know how are we doing this counseling thing while we're uh, working virtually, um, certainly feel free to contact any of the, uh, the emails that are listed here, depending on your campus. It's a slightly different email. Um, and there also are phone lines are available. I believe you may have to leave a message, a voicemail message, and then, um, but those voicemail are being monitored and uh, calls are being returned. Uh, so either way, whether it's voice or email, you wanna reach out and have questions feel free to do so. And as I just want to re remind you too, J Jeremy mentioned it earlier, but on our website, there's a lot more than um, just appointments, right? Just booking appointments. There's resources, a curated list of resources for on information. If you want to know about uh, ways to increase your wellness, some self-care tips, if you're looking for um, improving your sleep or improving your nutrition, um, there's a, some websites that we have on there with some good content that's relevant for students um, and that you can just link to uh, by, by going through our website. So feel free to do that. Um, so I just want to thank you so much. Jeremy and I would like to thank you for watching our webinar today. Uh, we hope that uh, the content was useful to you. And we really uh, hope that, um, again, that you're going to be able to know at least where to turn to, right? Where to turn to for help, where to turn to for increasing connection. And please do not hesitate to reach out. No question is too big or too small. Uh, no, no problem is too big or too small for us. We like to meet with all students and we're here to help you. We're not here to judge you. Uh, so please so feel free to reach out if needed. And uh, please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for, uh, for watching our webinar. Yeah, thanks everybody.